Welcome to episode 331 of the Help Me With HIPAA podcast. My name is David Sims of HIPAA for MSPs, and joining me is Donna Grindelwald Carden. Good afternoon, Donna. It is afternoon. <laughs> this is a weird day for us. So, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, it is afternoon. So today we're going to be talking about securing your legacy. That's it. I know that's what you worry about, David. It is, absolutely. You know, <laughs> got to make sure I live long after I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> but that well, is not these, these recordings. That'll have to be it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> 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 but uh, but that's technically not what we're talking about today. We're talking about legacy devices and legacy software and all this other stuff that plague healthcare and IT. Big time. Big time. Yeah, so we're going to get into that because um, we were reminded of that recently um, when OCR HHS came out with a newsletter during the NC SAM event of October. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll cover all that because there's some interesting stuff to talk about. Yes, it is interesting, David. That's why I selected it to talk about. <laughs> I'm sure that is exactly why you selected it. <laughs> no need to ask me because we were on the same page there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so what else you got going on well let's see well as we're recording this tomorrow is whiskeys of the world in atlanta so that's always a fun event for me mm. yeah so i can go try all these things and go okay that i'm glad i didn't buy <laughs> That's the, <laughs> all that that's brown really water yeah yeah and uh you know and I, I i know that you're down to the last tick tock of becoming a grandfather officially yeah and uh so i want to make sure that uh, uh i have an opportunity to like cheer and scream and party when you have the new yeah. baby by the time this airs i'm probably will be there yeah so see that'll exciting. be perfect yeah, exciting yeah i know his nickname is gonna be hippo <laughs> <laughs> not hippo pa, 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 pa. No, no, no one p one p, or, one p. His, his first name's murphy <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> are you just calling one p that one that, p. that would be a nanny i'm one p you know yeah. like two chains i'm one p <laughs> <laughs> Oh, little P. <laughs> little P. Little P. There you go. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, yeah, his name's going to be Gideon. So, I've been calling him Baby G. Oh, okay. Uh, so, he's going to be 30 years old running around here. Like, Baby G. <laughs> <laughs> That's his thug name, Baby G. <laughs> yeah. That is. Yeah. Well, he's, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's both fortunate and, I don't know what to call it to have you as a grandfather. <laughs> I don't know what to call it either yet. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to let him call you? I don't whatever know. He chooses. Yeah, just whatever, I guess. Yeah, as long as it's respectful. <laughs> yeah, that's a variable area there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, no, I mean, being, you know, being the first, I'm going in uncharted territory. So, I don't know. I'm looking forward to being able to play with them and spoil them and then send them home. So don't have to deal with any of the bad stuff. And everybody who's a grandparent tells me that, oh, this is so much better than being a parent. I'm like, yeah, but you got to go through the parent to get to the grandparent. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, it is great fun. Yeah. So it's going to be going to be interesting and uh, see how all this goes. Well, I'm excited for you and looking forward to, you know, hearing all the stuff. I was a very good aunt, so all of them being grown and not having, you know, too many, and I have those great nephews, which my friends point out makes you a grandparent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Technically. Yeah, I was like, I don't like you anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, let's get on with the business. All righty. Well, first, before we do, I want to thank our donors, as always. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hippo Boot Camp. I know you can't remember the date. 
<laughs> I'm so excited because I can. <laughs> you know, that was the final decision for the date so that I could actually remember it. Yeah, it was. You want to you tell everybody? The next one is the virtual one that is on 2-22-22. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So sign up for that. Go to the hippabootcamp.com. Yeah. Sign so up there. That's in February. And if you've ever been to a boot camp or you wished you could come to a boot camp, uh, you know, the thing we're going to do in September, I'm getting real excited about what we're building. So save the, the second week of uh, September looks like when we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. Twenty. 22 yeah and you might want to come to both of them come <laughs> come to one in february and the one well, in september. yeah i mean this is going to be it's designed to take it to the next level mm-hmm. and uh, uh it it's uh it's shaping up to be a really great it's not a conference it's training mm-hmm. we're not looking at i mean it is all about training and that's uh uh, a lot different than the conference where you bounce around uh, to all this stuff. So, yeah, yeah. Normal conference, you live with a lot of information, but you're like, okay, now what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. Everything that we do is why and how, and it's intended for you to leave with actionable items and and a plan of your priorities for the next, you know, two or three quarters at least. Mm -hmm. so uh we uh intend to carry that along like we do in the hippo boot camp uh, normal version and uh whatever our 2.0 maybe that's what we call maybe we call it it's got one p (laughs) that's it it's got one p (laughs) it's the one p conference yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not the pp conference it's the one p conference yeah or maybe we call it's it that. not a conference okay we we'll call it the conference we call it the uh not the pp symposium there you go <laughs> <laughs> all right so we got those and we've got the Cardin club where we're trying to build this thing so that if you are responsible for privacy and security and you need an answer and you need information you got one place you have to go. You don't have to worry about what's freely available from the government. We're going to have that there. What have we published in a podcast? What have we done in a webinar? What have we done in, in, in our classes? And there's free classes. Well, you know, it's free like anything else except for our podcast. You pay for it, but it's included in free. On this one, you just show up for the podcast. So mm-hmm. Yeah, it is free. Well, the podcast we offer we offer a money back refund. We don't yeah. you know, do that. Triple other. your money back. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are paying for this podcast, let us know where. <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> I want to get my cut. <laughs> uh, so that is a card and club, and the bigger picture is a card and club membership is included with the new HIPAA for MSPs uh, Mm -hmm. membership. Absolutely. Yeah, we are doing some amazing things over there that nobody else is doing. So, you know, can't compare us to somebody else because ain't none. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, we're bringing that in, the training, uh, everything that you need on the MSP side. We're also bringing in software. So for those people like, I need a software platform. Got it. And no, we didn't go build our own. We found a world class one and brought it in. It's already out there, already has a, you know, everything you need. So, um, you know, no, not trying to disparage those people who want to build their own, but you know, why do that? I'm not going to reinvent yeah. the wheel. Let me just yeah. steal somebody else's wheel. <laughs> we'll, we'll do what we do well. And let them do what they do well. Yep. <clears throat> and then we're we're building out a certification program right now with an actual certifying body, a healthcare. Yes accreditation firm who's uh they're going to uh give the the we're going to do the course they're going to give the actual testing and it is a it's a monitor test so it's not like you know just go and take this thing and click a few things and come back i mean you you have a proctor that's there you have a time limit to get it done it's very 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 
professional, and, um, and it will be the first of its kind accredited uh, HIPAA training for specifically for MSPs. Not another one out there. Mm-mm. That's all. I mean, it's all packaged together in one membership. So mm-hmm. uh, check it all out. And if you are not an MSP, uh, the Cardin Club is designed for you as a uh, client of an MSP potentially. And uh, everybody gets to work together in a collaborative environment. It is not a place you go for sales. It's a place you go to learn how to do all the things you need. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we're going to focus on recognized security practices and, and all of those kind of things. So there's a ton of stuff we're going to have in there that uh, you can get to, and it continues to grow. And, uh, you know, my team loves the fact that now part of the rules are every week we have to put new content out there so that we can continue to build that library of resources in card and club. Yep. And, uh, and, they, and they get access to you and I. Oh, Check. there is that. Yep. So lots of cool stuff. That might be a deal breaker for some. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man. So uh, today's entire episode is one of those HIPAA. Say what? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so talk about it. O- OCR's latest newsletter came out during EC Sam, and you know they wanted to go down the path of talking about the legacy devices because they are a problem in healthcare. And a well-known um, one. Yeah. And and what do you do about it? I mean, this is one of those things where. If, if you're on the IT side, you're just screaming, you can't do that. <laughs> and then from the healthcare side, they're going, but I got to. We have so, to do that. So, yeah. yeah. So you're like, and people, especially the on the MSP side, they look at me sometimes and they're like, wait a minute, but you said they can't. But what? Uh, uh, yeah, it's different. It's different. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're, let's talk about those problems and then the considerations that have to go into that because. It's not just a matter of going out there and saying XP can't be used anymore. If you're using XP in your environment, then you're not compliant. Um, can't say that. Not true. <laughs> um, but nope. it could be true. <laughs> yeah. And, and we've been telling people that and, and people would argue that we're wrong because a lot of people say that we're wrong. <laughs> yeah. Usually right before yeah. they figure out they're wrong. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and they're free to, to have those thoughts. Um, they're wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> they have a right you, to be wrong is what I always say. Yeah, yeah. And if you show me that I'm wrong, I will gladly say I was wrong. Look at this. I thought this, but this is really it. I've never I will had do that. that. It, it is very, very rare, <laughs> but one of the things that OCR puts this out clearly that they make two points on the lead end of this one HIPAA requires you to take care of everything around the PHI period. They make it clear. Let's just go into this by saying it's not like you get a pass. Mm -hmm. So yes, you have to do these things, but two, they know that this industry is just bogged down. I mean, it's just being weighed down in a lot of ways by devices and software platforms and and other tools that because of the nature of the beast, you have to have them. Yeah. Yeah. I had a client years ago that had a, um, an ultrasound machine and it was a handheld one, but it plugged into a laptop. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You just, you know, had a special port on it, plug it into the laptop, and then you got an ultrasound. You can carry it around with you. And one day the laptop died. The the motherboard in the laptop went out. And so I was like, well, just replace the laptop. You know, uh, all the rest of the stuff works. They couldn't, couldn't replace a laptop. It's not that easy. It's like, easy. no, we have to go buy a new one, but we can't just buy the laptop. We have to buy everything all over again. And it was going to cost forty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And so um what I did, <laughs> being you know, 
who I am. <laughs> I was I stumbled across the exact same laptop uh, on eBay. And of course, it wasn't used for the same thing, but it was the exact same laptop. So I bought the laptop for like 200 bucks. And all I all I did was swap the hard drives out and plugged all the equipment into the to the new laptop and, and bam, it worked. But, you know, I was fortunate that I was able to do that. But, I, you know, you can't go to a, a, a practice and say, I understand that you've got a two hundred dollar laptop problem that, you know, we could fix, but you need to spend forty thousand dollars buying new equipment. Yep. You no. Know, well, and the other thing is that many, many of those devices, you can't upgrade. You can't add security uh, patches to it because the device can no longer be guaranteed that it will provide accurate diagnostics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is one of the things, uh, you know, that, that they go into in, in this uh, discussion is they say, we, we know this is a problem. And we know it's not easy to fix, particularly with the medical devices. Now, there's some things that don't have to do with medical devices, but the vast majority of this is medical devices, which is why it's one of the top five threats in Hiccup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and most people are like, I'm not even going to worry about medical devices. Therein lies the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it is such a big issue on both sides because, you know, you've asked me before, like, okay, you're an MSP. Are you going in and you're managing the medical devices that connect to the network? Oh, no, no. Wow. Most MSPs don't. That's not something that we touch. We don't want to touch it. It's not, you well, know. And, uh, and those device vendors don't want you touching it. Right. Uh, and so at, at best we can identify them and then try to have a plan around, you know, who, who is responsible for it and who do we need to call to find out information or to get to work on it. But just because you have an IT vendor that you're paying or even staff IT, it doesn't mean these things are getting looked at. Mm -mm. And even if, you know, they wanted to, many of them, they can't, there's their hands are tied. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of times though, we hear the reasons, hear the reasons that we always hear, uh, you know, like that, you, you, we don't touch that at all, you know, or the really misinformed ones go, well, I'm sure it's secure. <laughs> uh, those are the, the i always am like i am never sure something's secure <laughs> yeah ever um then I, I love the ones of it doesn't connect to the ehr so it's fine mm -hmm. it connects to the network mm -hmm. <laughs> um that means you can't just ignore it and then the whole thing is, well, it connects to the network, but we don't do email on it. Well, phishing and all of that is not the one way, you know, the only way that things get in. So you have to worry about these devices. They're a necessary evil, kind of like email. We just had an episode on that. Um, but there are many reasons that we end up with them out there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and OCR goes through and makes the list which I turned into our own interpretation of the list. <laughs> uh, that, uh, you know, the uh, first one is uh, they're not able to replace it without sacrificing availability of data, disrupting critical services or compromising integrity. Uh, this can apply to medical devices, EHRs and other systems offering critical services. So again, this is, there's so much out there and the vendors are like, if you touch anything, it's going to stop working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I still see people that are on uh, DOS-based systems. Yeah, because that's the only way I can get that one thing to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a client right now. We're actually dealing with them this week on one because they're, they have a DOS-based system not connected to anything. You know, like mm -hmm. it can't connect to anything. can't connect to the network. It needs to be standing alone in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> with his face in the wall <laughs> <laughs> and the dunce hat on <laughs> yeah yeah oh no a dos hat yep 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 <laughs> <laughs> yep so uh yeah it, it, it can't it cannot connect and you know they have they're having an issue with it it's so funny because we've got these new technicians and they're like they've never seen it dos what do you mean what's dos <laughs> how am i supposed never to work on this it. thing i can't remote into it i know 
<laughs> never laid eyes on it's it. so I funny find that's interesting <laughs> Uh, the other thing is, uh, in the, you know, we call it the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it solution. Mm -hmm. You know, they're working and I know how to use it. And if I get a new one, I got to learn how to use it. It's super expensive. It's going to slow us down. It may not work the same way. It may not give us what we're used to. It ain't broke. We're not going to fix it. Yeah. That, that whole it's working a comment drives me nuts because yeah. you, more times than not, when we take over a new client, you know, we find all kinds of problems, just terrible security issues. Um, it, but when we bring them up, sometimes the business owner's like, but it's working. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, it's oh working. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the ones who say, we never call you. So, you know, we don't need to be paying so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you have an MSP who you're having to call all the time, maybe that's what the problem is. Yeah, anyway. yeah, that you shouldn't be calling all the time if they're doing their job right. Yeah. But anyway. It's not like the systems are working on their own. And if <laughs> they are, that's a big problem. So <laughs> uh, the next one, the organization is reluctant to replace a system well-tailored to its business or a high degree of confidence. Uh, and again, same thing, but a lot of times what we see is new models or new versions of software, they're not going to work the way that we needed them to work within the organization's workflow. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you know, we're dealing with a client right now that had used this piece of software that had been supported by the vendor. I mean, they started using it when it was cutting edge new stuff the vendor was doing. And now the vendor's like, well, we're not going to do it that way anymore. We're going to do it this new way. Well, part of that functionality still comes across on the new way, but the way they did the new way, some of it's not functioning that way anymore. So if they switch, they got to change their workflow and find another way to handle this third piece that is being taken away. So that alone, uh, you know, switching to the latest and greatest, sometimes it's 40 grand for something that costs $200. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and some of these diagnostic equipment, I mean, you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring these things in. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you know, using the latest and greatest, uh, I've disconnected a feature or it won't work with the, uh, uh, you know, it changes the way that it works so that it doesn't work with our workflow and we'll have to change everything that we're doing. Uh, or uh, it, we don't uh, use the same, it, you know, it changes the numbers. It changes how you read things. I mean, it's like a big change in right. a lot of these cases. Well, in, in all these decisions though, you should be bringing in your security officer, your IT team, uh, and having these conversations because whether you decide to stay on what you have or upgrade or whatever, I, do this before you make a decision. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to get to that in just a second. So here's the other reason they end up having them is the domino effect. Mm -hmm. We decide we can't upgrade part A because of one of the things we talked about. So because of that, and it has to work with part B, now we can't upgrade part B because part B can't talk to part A if we upgrade it. So that gets, you know, that's that domino effect. Once you make that decision one time, you need to understand that that's going to have repercussions throughout your rest of your risk management decision making. Mm -hmm. And then the final one of, and, and it, it is the big one. It is the huge problem. No money, no time, no resources to actually be able to retire that legacy equipment. Anybody got time for that? Uh-huh. That's exactly <laughs> it. So as OCR stated, um, while many factors may contribute to the decision to continue to use legacy systems, it is important that the organization includes security in its considerations, especially 
when the legacy system could be used to access, store, create, maintain, receive, or transmit EPHI. Amen. So basically, they're making it clear right up front. We understand that you may need to do this, but that doesn't mean that now I don't have to worry about the security of it because I need to do it. Right. <laughs> no, no free pass. So then they go into, well, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Guess what you do, David? The very first thing is always, always, always a risk analysis. Exactly. And this is where it comes in where people seem to think that a risk analysis is I just run a scan <laughs> and answer a few questions. Yeah. Um, that is not what a risk analysis is. We've done many episodes on what a risk analysis is. Um, that's not what we're going to talk about here, but basically, uh, you need to do the risk analysis that determines what the vulnerabilities this legacy system brings into your organization and what's that level of risk. And you compare that to the price of retiring the, the device or, uh, replacing it. And, uh, if you decide still that you need to keep it. Now you got to figure out how you're going to scare it because you know the vulnerabilities. Right. So uh, as they say, and this is where we can talk about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, how are you going to, how, how are you going to secure it? And it's not like, oh, well, now I'm going to go put some uh, security stack on it. <laughs> David still can't touch that, uh, the, the, you know, the laptop, that sonogram machine. Mm -hmm. You can't put software on that. No, no. Well, for a number of reasons, but no, you can't put software on there. It's, it'll bog it down like crazy. It'll block a bunch of stuff that's probably supposed to be running. And worse yet, it'll probably upgrade something that will break it. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things. So you can't do your normal security plan. You've got to come up with other ways. Mm -hmm. So the number one way and the first thing that everybody should do, and we should do more of that, is segmentation. That's right. Sit in the corner by itself. <laughs> <laughs> with his DOS hat on. With his DOS hat on. <laughs> uh, so, and we've tried in there when we covered the uh, executive order that talked about doing segmentation. We tried to explain it mm -hmm. along with zero trust and they're somewhat integrated. The two of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's just how far do you segment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As far as you can. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I know of cases where because these uh, devices were segmented out onto their own network, separate from everybody else, that when a network was hit, those devices weren't. And if they could have hit those devices, it would have been bad. So if your IT company or your in-house IT is not talking to you about segmentation, I mean, you should be segmenting at least a few things. Oh, yeah. I mean, even at what size, if let's say... I've got 10 computers on the network. Should I segment it? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we segment uh, down to one. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's what matter. zero trust is sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you're segmenting all the time because typically every network is going to have um, Wi-Fi almost always. So mm -hmm. no, immediately you're looking at, okay, we're going to segment Wi-Fi from, from wired network some way. Mm -hmm. Um, and then potentially you're going to have multiple segmentations of the Wi-Fi. You're going to have a guest Wi-Fi and you're going to have a, maybe an employee's Wi-Fi and maybe an IOT Wi-Fi or something like VoIP. that. VoIP Wi-Fi. I mean, the segmentation happens a lot, um, on the Wi-Fi level because most people have it. So even though I might not segment something with 10 computers, I might not segment the wired portion because I don't expect anybody to use that portion except for employees. Maybe, but that's where the risk analysis comes in is I have to look at all these things. 
But if you've got a legacy device on there and it is plugging in, then I would certainly try to segment that off from everything else. Yes. So any, it, the medical devices should be segmented no matter what, mm -hmm. really, in my opinion, because you're going to have security things with those. Yep. So uh, having them on their own uh, little world and, and segmentation, think of it as little network islands. Mm -hmm. And they're all their individual networks. And then there are bridges that connect to the mainland in the middle <laughs> is, is, you know, and then it goes out to the internet. So think of it that way. So that it gives you the ability to control things. And it's hard to see things when I'm in one segment, I don't see the others. All right. Thank you for agreeing and telling me I'm right. You are right. You validate me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so restrict access to the device. Now that that's, you know, there's a lot of ways to do that. So you can physically restrict access to the device. And that's the most common way. Yeah. Well, when you get, when you get down to the smaller practices, this is where this becomes a problem because everybody has access to everything. Um, right. You know, they'll oftentimes are using the same username for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I've heard the argument before, too, where they'll say, um, well, we've got different usernames and passwords for our EHR, but everything else is on the same. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, I just went through one of those. And again, there may be times where you need to do it a certain way. But when you do it that way, you need to balance that. You don't turn off this security piece. And just wing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you turn something off, then you need to uh, balance it out with a whole bunch of others. That's right. A compensating control. Oh, yes. Aren't you good? Keeping balance. <laughs> Keep the zen. In the, uh, but this whole concept of restricting access, we see this a lot. And it gets back to like your, your uh, DOS corner. Mm -hmm. uh the a big thing that we see is these legacy ehrs you know 10 years ago everybody started getting on ehrs mm -hmm. right a little over 10 years ago and nobody is still on necessarily the same one yeah we hope not <laughs> and as you move through these different versions they are that they, they don't have it built in to convert which drives me nuts mm. that, you know, and, and a lot of times that's on purpose. That's by design so that you are locked into using us as a vendor, Yep. which I am never a fan of, but it is the thing. And then they end up with these records. Cause guess what? In healthcare, I can't get rid of the records. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I can't just go, okay, well, we're not, you know, all of that, those accounts are paid off. We don't need them anymore. No, nope, you can't. That is not what you can do. You are no longer allowed to do that. So the uh, solution in many cases has been the, the DOS corner kind of thing. You know, there's a room that stays locked and no one goes in there. Only a few people have a key. And even if you get in there, only a few people know how to log into that computer. And then if you can log into that computer, only a few people know how to log into the old EHR and get to the data. It's not connected to anything. It's the classic air gap. Mm -hmm. Just not the James Bond level. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But, and you know, and the passwords are like 15 characters long. If the system will allow it, those old systems. Yeah. Any of them won't let you do more than eight. I know. I love that. Maximum of eight characters. I'm like, what? <laughs> and they, you know, very rarely do they have 2FA, but that is a, a solution to saying, I have to maintain this device in my environment. How can I keep it from being a vulnerability used against me? So then you get the other one that's uh, in there. Uh, is limiting functions on the device. Mm -hmm. Now that's something, uh, eh, well, how, 
explain that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's different, different ways you can do it, but, and oftentimes it may take different software to make this happen, but you can lock it down in ways that don't, it doesn't allow certain applications to run or it will allow other applications to run, or it won't allow certain ports to open or, um, you know, you, you just want to lock it down so that it, it can only be used for only what it needs to be used for. It's kind of like a, think of like a kiosk. You know, if you if you ever seen mm-hmm. the computer being ran in a kiosk, I mean, when you turn it on, it boots straight into that software. You can't yeah. do anything else with it. Um, it's it's purpose built for that, and it's mm-hmm. and that's kind of the same thing as you want it to be serving its purpose, uh, and that's the only thing it can do. It can't possibly be used for anything else. And and that is not something that is easy to do and make sure it's done right. Mm-mm. Not if it's connected to the network, because there's so many layers uh, in the the network stack. The the well, we're not going to go into. Let's don't go there. We're not, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of layers, and people think that it's just like point A to point B. It's not. There are so many layers between that piece of metal and silicone and wires and plastic to where you click a button and, uh, with a mouse and it knows what to do. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't think people truly understand that, but it's doable. I highly recommend the other two before trying to do that. To me, that one would be the hardest one to be sure about and to audit and make sure they would do. Yeah, for sure. And then as always, you have plan A, plan B, plan Z, and then plan for it all go wrong. <laughs> plan D, disaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because these devices are old. A lot of times that's why you're not getting rid of them because you can't get them anymore. Mm-hmm. They're going to die. Yeah. And when they do, whoo. <laughs> that's yeah, when somebody says, don't we have a backup of this data? Well, we, yeah, well, but number one, we don't know if the backup is recoverable, but two, even if it is, we have to have the old software to even be able to read the data. <laughs> to put it on something. Yeah, that's a mess. Yeah, I mean, that, it, it's not as easy as, as one would think. If that device no longer works and you're already using it because you can't get another one. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's time to start planning for how are you going to replace it? Not just keep using it for the next 10 years. <laughs> well, and we're starting to see a lot of folks where, you know, the ones that are doing the secure piece, they're going and saying, okay, we're going to retire that and we'll get the latest. But then the one they retire goes on the secondary market because it still works. Mm-hmm. So then people bring that thing in and we've seen cases, you know, where it goes back to that domino effect thing of, I can't switch that out because it'll mess up all these other things so they're buying them off that secondary market for one of those reasons Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes it's just the money yep and often when it comes in from that secondary market it's got phi on it (laughs) it does (laughs) (laughs) so uh, who knows what happened where it came from so uh, the the big thing though (laughs) to remember is you should plan for this thing to fail. Like if you're listening to this podcast, it's, you should think that it could be failing right now at all times that you have to have a backup. You have to know what you're going to do. If you can no longer use this device, are you going to buy the new one? Are you going to look for one on a secondary market? Would you even know where that secondary market is? Are they even there? You know, that what some of these devices, you might find them occasionally on the secondary market. So that can't be your plan. So if you do all these other things to secure it, then you have to have a plan for when you can no longer secure it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because so, at some point you're going to be there. Yeah. Either the security you have in place can't be used anymore because of some other domino effect the device fails um 
you know, the information coming off the device, something starts to not make sense. If you can't be confident in diagnostic equipment that the test you run is accurate, you know, and we know there are plenty of times where people are told they have this disease or that problem, and it comes back to equipment that wasn't right. And that's mm -hmm. why we always say, get that second opinion, have that test run again. Even though the insurance companies are like, we just ran the test. Well, yeah. Run it again. <laughs> um, run until it tells me what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> right. I need to get at least two. You know, they hear that all the time about the folks that they tested. Uh, oh, I was exposed to COVID and I took the test three times. And on the third time, it said I was positive for COVID. Mm -hmm. okay well glad you kept taking it because it took a while for it to kick in you know that's exactly what we're talking about is those that diagnostic tool that you have to use i have to know that the information coming out of it i can count on it and that's a lot of times why they don't want to get rid of equipment because you know oscar over there is reliable <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it, it has been uh, there for me. I had a friend in college that had a, a fan that kept, you know, a lot of people sleep with a fan on. It was uh -huh. the first time I really saw somebody that, like, literally had to have this fan blowing up and down. But it was Oscar the Oscillating Fan. <laughs> so <laughs> everything has to have a name. Anyway, you never know why that came to my mind. <laughs> all right well, I, was it, gonna, I was gonna say typically this is where you hear somebody go but it works but it works exactly yeah. it works right now it's been working for years yeah we don't have to worry about it all right here's my favorite question how long do you think it'll last <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised it's running right now i know <laughs> but did this thing could last 50 years it could last five minutes who knows it's it's yeah. electronics yeah you know. So, uh, you know, your technology doctor has got nothing. Yeah. You know, and there's plenty of times that we can diagnose a problem and think, I don't know how it's going to live much longer. And then it just does. Mm -hmm. Number of times I've looked at logs that are being kicked out and all you do is turn it off and leave it off for a day. And it just kind of chills. Yeah. And then it works again. That's right. You have to I've done that to a coffee pot before. You have to flush the circuitry. <laughs> oh there you go it needs to be flushed <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah all right okay. folks that is our show for today thanks for listening now you know how to secure your legacy <laughs> <laughs> but just know that you can't just say you know we're done we don't have to worry about it secure that legacy by flushing it <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> all right uh, so remember to share us out on social media and uh, download our app we got some cool stuff in the app there go check it out and remember mm -hmm. for donna and myself hipaa is not about compliance it's about patient care <laughs>